you, you can't just dig in directly here in, on the event log and start scrolling. It's it's not feasible. So trace well, has had a, a, a whole lot of time, right? Yeah, yeah, but yeah, I, I would guess you would get tired after a while. Right. Hey guys, welcome to Embedded Toolbox, the video interview series where we try to save the world by solving one engineering challenge at a time. As embedded systems move become more and more complex, we're seeing uh, more and more advanced processors, the use of more and more uh, operating systems and RTOSs, and obviously when you're trying to integrate various parts of those applications, uh, debugging becomes much more complex, development in general becomes more much more complex. And uh, specifically when we're looking at multi-threaded applications, uh, to dive into some of the challenges that we're experiencing uh, in that arena, today we have on Johan Kraft, who is the CEO and founder of Persepio. How are you doing, Johan? Hi, thanks for having me. I'm doing great, thanks. Sure thing. Uh, so as you just heard, um, you know, multi-threaded applications is outside of the domain of traditional embedded uh, engineering, but it's becoming commonplace now. So you've got to integrate all of these different elements um, into your system design. Uh, of course, that raises the complexity significantly. Would you agree? Yeah, traditional debugging tools are really desi designed for uh, single-threaded applications and debugging of individual functions. You step through code one line at a time. Mm -hmm. But most uh, embedded and IoT developers today are working in large multi-threaded systems based on Arctos or Linux kernel. And this is a major difference because you actually don't have a single program anymore, but you have a system of mm -hmm. interacting programs or tasks. And errors that show up on, in this integration phase are often notoriously difficult to find. You have already tested all these modules by themselves, but now they need to run together as a complete system. Right. And, you know, as before, when you'd go line by line to check, um, you know, how your code was looking in a, in a given application or, or system build, now because you have um, these operating systems and these multiple processes happening all at once that you're trying to integrate, going through code line by line is a little bit um, unrealistic, would you agree? Yeah, I mean, when well, you notice an error in this kind of integration stage, when you have a complete system running on your desk, it's really difficult to know where to begin debugging until you can kind of isolate the problem. Mm -hmm. And it's often not even apparent in the source code, but depends on the kind of combined behavior of multiple tasks. Mm -hmm. Tracealizer provides visual trace diagnostics for multi-threaded embedded IoT systems. And this is based on two kinds of data that we're recording in runtime. It's kernel tracing uh, in the Arctos or Linux kernel. You see things like context switching and system calls, and also application logging. So you can add your own annotations and data to, to, the, to the recording. And then on top of this, we have a really powerful visualization system that gives you great possibilities to find anomalies and, and drill down to, to see the problem. Very good. Well, um, I know you have uh, an example prepared for us today. Can we uh, take a take a dive right in, Johan? Sure. So um, now we're inside of um, Atmel Studio because you're running on an actual target. Is that correct, Johan? That's right. I have an, an Atmel board here running an ARM-based chip, 32-bit MCU with free autos. And... Uh, yeah, that's right. It's um, it's a basic um, demo showing a, a minimal case where trace elizer can be useful. We have a, a couple of tasks running, and there is a shared resource that is used incorrectly, uh, resulting in that the output from the system is occasionally, just occasionally, corrupted. So normally it works fine, but this once in a while you see a glitch, basically. And um, I can demonstrate this right here. Uh, if we start this uh, board here, running now, uh, you should, oops, here you go, you see the output here. There are basically two kinds of lines, a lot of H and a lot of L's. And there, all, all of a sudden, there is something different. There is a line starting with L's, and then, then all of a sudden there is a lot of H here. Mm -hmm. So what's, the shared, like so what's the shared resource that these tasks are using? The shared resource here is actually the, the, the UART that is used for this serial console, but it's the same principle with anything. 
uh, any shared resource. It could be an SPI bus, it could be a, a Bluetooth interface or anything that is uh, the different, the software tasks are sharing. There are obviously two parts of the system that are writing to this uh, UART. And it seems that one started writing here and all of a sudden it was uh, interrupted by something else, else that started writing. So th there is some kind of conflict here going on. And um, this is exactly uh, a case where you would use Tracealizer. So we can try that. Reset the board. And then we have Tracealizer here. So we click uh, Record Streaming Trace. And so now we'll see a live presentation of this free auto system. And here we can see the behavior in Tracealizer. Uh, it's a fairly idle system. The load is a two to three uh, percent. But and now we should have captured this this issue that we saw before. So if I freeze here or stop the recording, we can now see the that we have a couple of tasks here that are. This is using the UART. Mm. It's writes writing the else. And uh, if we zoom out a bit, we have another task here, writing the H data. I mean, this is just placeholders to symbolize different kinds of right. uh, outputs. So we have two tasks here using this UART. And, uh, but the, this trace is uh, 20 seconds long, and now we're looking at microseconds. So how do we find the, the, the problem in this mm -hmm. data? Tracealizer is very much adapted for uh, exploratory anal analysis. That's basically a top-down analysis where you start by looking at overviews of the behavior mm -hmm. and then you can find anomalies at that level and basically drill down to see the details and uh, one of these high level overviews we have is this this one here we see um, metrics from the different tasks basically performance values so here we can see that the response time of this yellow task task low is um, typically about 4.3 milliseconds. Mm -hmm. But all of a sudden we have a spike here with a response time over six milliseconds. So here is something different. So then we can just double click on this point and see what happened here. Uh, so now we can zoom in, zoom in and see in the trace. So now we have found this interesting spot in the trace, mm. eight seconds into the execution. And this means that you have the two different two tasks here and they are colliding in time. They run at basically the same time and the high priority task is preempting the low priority task. Mm -hmm. And both are using this UART. And that's the explanation of the problem we saw with when the output was, was corrupted. So this is one example of how you can find issues in, in long traces. I mean, Tracealizer can record systems for many minutes or even hours if you like. A, a, the kind of classic solution to avoid um, in, uh, kind of accident, accidental collisions like this is to use uh, what's called a mutex, a kind of semaphore for mutual exclusion. Uh, so we can try to fix that this and see how it looks in Tracealizer. So we're going to so, jump back into Atmel Studio really quickly. And yeah, exactly. And. Um, we can look, take a look at the tasks here. They, they are quite simple, two almost identical tasks that read some data, does some processing on it, and then outputs it. And this output is using this shared uh, UART. Um, we have, there's another function in this application that actually uses a mutex uh, um, using the free artist call X semaphore take, I believe to protect this output access. Uh, so we add, we change this function call and we change this function call in the other task like that. And we build. This is done, okay. So now we can try again with a mutex that is now protecting this UART. So the tasks can't access it at the same time. So now we can restart Tracealizer here like that. 
and we'll clear the console. And then we start the system. Okay, so now if this works, then we shouldn't see that, that, that bad pattern anymore. It should continue like this forever. Oh, that's and, great. Uh, hopefully it does, but we can verify that uh, the mutex works as intended in Tracealizer. And now we have recorded for a while. Stop. And if we now open this, uh, we locate any collisions, any preemptions. We can see that we have, we still get the, these preemptions, but it's not a problem anymore because um, the mutex is protecting this shared resource. Right. So now we can see that the yellow task begins executing. It is preempted by the red task, but this is when this tries to take this mutex, that's already locked by the yellow task. So it's it's not successful and needs to wait. And so this shaded area represents time when the red task is waiting to resume. And the, the yellow task is finishing its operation first. Wow, that's great. It sure beats uh, going through line by line, doesn't it? Yeah, I mean, this can really speed up uh, debugging in many cases. And uh, we have a lot of uh, very satisfied customers using this today. Well, that's all really good stuff. So, um, you know, we were using Atmel Studio, obviously. Um, what other development environments um, does Tracealizer integrate with? And, you know, is it native or do you have to use, uh, you know, separate programs at once? Uh, yeah, we have uh, support for several different uh, development tool chains. The compiler is actually not that important for Tracealizer as long as the recorder library we provide uh, can be compiled, that it's, that it's no problem. Um, but what's more important is the kind of debugging tools, how you connect to the target system. We have support for um, Sega J-Link, uh, ST Micros, ST-Link, uh, also, if you have an Eclipse-based IDE, like um, ST's uh, STCube IDE, then uh, we have a plugin for that, so that integrates Tracealizer with IDE. We also have support for Kyle and IAR tools, so we can pull out data from those tool chains. Uh, the most important uh, kind of integration point for Tracealizer is actually the operating system used. We have support for FreeRTOS, ThreadX, uh, Kyle uh, RTX5. Uh, we have a new version for Linux tracing coming out soon, uh, etc. Yeah, that's excellent. Well, and if and if you're not using uh, any of those uh, tool chains or operating systems, then you shouldn't be developing in the first place, right? <laughs> well, there are there are managed to choose from. So, <laughs> <laughs> yes. Um, well, I want to thank you very much. That's Johan Kraft. He is the CEO and founder of uh, Sepio. Mm -hmm.